Today, we're gonna go over three motion graphics techniques that are super easy. By the end of the video, you'll be able to make a stylistic title like this by using some really easy mask animation techniques in Fusion. Even if you don't know a whole lot about Fusion, this is gonna be so helpful if you're into motion graphics. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. I just have a new Fusion composition open with some text here. And I have a transform node that just scales this down. And I have a mask that just kind of puts a mask on that transform. So we have this nice little schloop kind of thing going on. Also something to mention real quick is that I've turned off the buttons down here by going to Workspace, Show Page, Navigation, just so we have a little bit more room to work in the nodes. So I wanna show you a couple of different techniques here to just add a little bit of style to your motion graphics. These are super easy and they're all using masks. I'll also just give a little shout out to Sunduck Film who makes really cool After Effects tutorials. I've learned a lot of motion graphics stuff from him and a couple of the things he did in this video for a great motion graphics techniques in After Effects inspired this a little bit. So if you're into motion graphics, go check him out. He does After Effects tutorials, but a lot of those things you can use similar ideas in Fusion. So today we're just going to be adding a couple little, I don't know what you'd call them, maybe a little add-on, little popper things that just add a little bit of style to our otherwise you know, kind of static title. And probably the easiest version of this is just to take a background node. So I'll just grab a background node here and take it and merge it over our existing comp. And let's make this a white background node. And I'm gonna take a mask, just like an ellipse, and plug that into the background. That's gonna make a circle. And we'll just take the circle down a little bit, something like that. And here, let's uncheck solid and push up the border width. And now we get a little ring and we can just animate the size of this. This is just so easy. So we'll just take the width and the height and set those keyframes. I happen to be at frame 24. That's going to work fine. Let's go to frame zero and then just take the width and the height all the way down. And so now as I play this back, we'll just look at this isolated here. We just get this circle growing like that. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to let it grow, but we're going to fade this out by the time it stops. So at frame 24 here, we can go to the level controls, which is just kind of the opacity of the mask. We'll set this keyframe and just bring it down and we'll come back a couple of frames. So frame 15 or so, and we'll just push this level all the way up. So now we have this growing and kind of fading out as it goes. Ah, so easy to do. And now we can take this. We've kind of made our own little element here and we'll just maybe do a transform after this check this out. Hit two on the keyboard. We can take this transform and we can just place this wherever we want. Size it, that kind of thing. Just maybe put it over here. And now look at this. When we play this back, it's just a nice little bloop, almost like a little water ripple. Cool. Let's maybe move this back in time a little bit to where maybe after we animate in. So maybe we'll start right there at like frame 10 or so. We can go up to where it says keyframes like this and we'll select our ellipse mask and twirl these down and we'll just take all of these keyframes and just move them back a little bit. Something like that. There we go. Easy. Yes. And we can duplicate that as much as we want. You just grab another transform, run our same background into it and kind of move this over like this. Guess what? Now it's going to bloop bloop do that in two different places. That works if we want those to be at the same time. We could also not do the transform. We could just move this mask around and copy and paste the mask. Put that a couple places if we want to just kind of condense things. Control C, Control V. Just paste that mask a couple times like this. Put this here maybe. Then we can go into our keyframes here. And I'm just selecting whatever I want to adjust in the keyframes panel. And under these three dots here, I have show only selected tools enabled. I think that's really helpful for just kind of keeping things organized a little bit. Twirl all these down. I can move these around and kind of offset them a little bit. Let's just do something like this. And now as we play this back, blue, blue, blue. So easy. Really nice. Let's just maybe do one of these. And I like the transform thing too. There's, you know, a hundred different ways to duplicate this if we want to, but something like that. Just reset our center here. There we have that little splash. Let's make something a little more fancy than that. Check out this trick. This is really cool. Let's rename this background. Let's just call this white. I'm going to make another white background here, plug it into our merge. And this time we're going to use a polygon mask and I'll connect this. And then right here in the center, I'll just view the white by itself. And I'm just going to start towards the middle and then draw a line straight up like this. Okay. And then let's take an uncheck solid and push up the border width. And now we have this little line like that. And if we take the length down, then we can kind of draw this on, but we could take the length down to like a little nubbin and then we can animate the position and look what happens. We have a little trace here. So we could do kind of a similar thing as we did with our side size, but we're going to do it with the position this time. And so let's start the position at zero and then maybe go up to 20 frames or so. And we'll take the position all the way up to one. I'm also going to right click and remove this polygon one polyline. That's going to get rid of any shape animation we have. And now we have this 
kind of doing that. Let's do the same thing with our level. I'm gonna make our level zero at frame zero and frame 20, and then about frame 10, we're gonna push that up like this. I'm gonna go to my spline panel and make sure I flatten all of my tangents here. I can select all of these keyframes like this and hit F on the keyboard to flatten them out. And now we have this nice kind of eased animation. That looks cool. But now are you ready for the magic? I mean, this is cool by itself, but check out this magic. I could do something like make a duplicate node UP. I'm just hitting shift spacebar to bring this up, this select tool. And what we can do, since we kind of have this pointed towards the center, is we can offset this by an angle. So let's just say like 60 degrees. And then we can push up the copies of this. And look what happens. If we push this up. Oh, baby, we can make six copies. And now look, we have a little star. Look at this little blooper. Oh, dude, we didn't even have to do much. And look at how cool this is. That's a little cartoon, little pop. Isn't that awesome? And same thing, we could do a transform after this. And guess what? Now, we have a little animated element which we can put wherever we want we'll just have this you know pop in right here so now bloom oh, that looks so good let's select this polygon go to our keyframes and adjust the timing here let's maybe move this back just a little so right about when this pops in see how that looks oh so cool it's a little faster that looks cool by the way if you're just getting into fusion things can be really confusing i mean there's so many different nodes and effects and everything well i have a little workshop that simplifies things down to the nine nodes that you need to make just about anything in fusion you can click right here or click on the link below to get access to that for free so make sure to check that out it's my gift to you let's keep going so we can make a couple of these we could duplicate this we can offset them in time all of that kind of thing so just real easy to do this stuff i could even just do an old-fashioned copy and paste like this nothing wrong with doing that this one will transform make a little bit smaller maybe we'll put like right here and we'll offset this just a little bit a couple frames now we have that popping in like that oh it just looks so good so easy to make those little elements and what's cool about this is you could even take this and just group it make it its own little element thing like this and call it you know pop and then you don't have to see all these nodes you know and you can kind of just treat it like footage but we'll go back because i like having a couple of those poppers those look neat take this maybe put it in the background here so we started with a simple you know bubble kind of thing these are let's just call them poppers these by the way these are underlays if you select a group of nodes and you hit shift spacebar and type und for underlay that'll make a little window behind them and if you double click off of it and then hold down alt and click on it you can select it just by itself then you could hit f2 to rename you can change the color you can do all that stuff if you have nothing selected and you just grab it and move it it's going to grab everything that it's under which can be convenient if that's what you want to do yeah that's kind of what i'm adding there and then the third thing that we can do with i mean almost the same technique is just kind of trace the outsides of things with a mask so again i'll just grab a white background merge it over and let's take a mask and just drag this and i'm just going to kind of do like a little stroke around here like that and I can switch my tool to this third tool, this insert and modify tool, to kind of click off of it and select different parts and kind of adjust this a little bit easier. And we'll just kind of adjust this to be that same curve as that S. And now we could do a similar thing, right? We could take this uncheck solid, push up the border width just a little bit, take the length down a lot, and we could animate the position. And look, it kind of traces that. Oh, so neat. And again, same thing. We're just going to animate this position. Let's just start it at 30. Why not? I'm going to right click and remove the polygon polyline like this. And here at 30, we're going to animate our position and our level, take the level down to zero. And then in 20 frames or so, we're going to take the position all the way up to one. We're going to have the level at zero still in the middle we're going to have the level up at one okay again in the spline panel make sure that all of your curves are flattened here by selecting them and hitting f and look at this kind of traces it oh and it's so easy look at that so cool this is like the most basic thing and it just looks like you spent a million hours on it. it looks like you know what you're doing when you're animating and you just you don't you don't have to anyway <laughs> we'll do the same thing i'll just copy and paste this polygon like this but this time i'm just going to select the polygon like this and delete it and i can add a new one so i'll just maybe add one here and all of my animation and everything is based on just the position and the level not the actual shape that i'm drawing and so it's going to animate perfectly on that new shape also which is just real convenient so whoosh looks so nice look at that and i mean you can add as many of those as you want and just real easily control c control v again i'll just grab that third tool and i can just kind of go crazy and have things just outline like that Ugh, so neat you can make 50 of these things and just really stylize things with i mean so little work so easy to do and yeah if i wanted to offset these i can select them and go over to keyframes twirl these down and i can just grab any of these and just offset them a little bit something like that yeah looks great let's just take and duplicate some of these little bubbles or actually you know what we've already done three motion graphics techniques but i want to show you a bonus tip okay 
take this bubble thing that we've done. Let's just get rid of this transform. We just have this bubble in the middle like this. I'm just gonna unhook this and make some particles, right? So just grab a particle emitter and a particle render. Plug this renderer in like this. For the emitter, let's go over to region and say all. We can go to style and instead of point, we'll say bitmap. For animate, switch this to particle age. And then we'll just take this little animated bubble thing that we have here. Let's actually just move the keyframes down to start at frame zero like this. We'll plug that into our P emitter and look at this. Look at all those bubbles. I'm gonna turn the particle number down to like one or something so that we don't kill the computer, but look at this. Now we can add all these little bubbles and dude, that took like two seconds. It was so easy. We can go over to style. Under size, let's push up the size a little bit, make these a little bigger, push up the variance, make them all different sizes. And now we have these all coming in at different times and different places. Look at all that. Oh, so neat. We can set our particle life to be just as long as our animation is. So it's probably not more than 24 frames. So let's just go over to control and say lifespan 24. That'll help everything go a little faster. There we go. There's all our little particles. <laughs> So easy. So cool. Even if you know nothing about particles, literally just do that. Switch the region to all, switch the style to bitmap, play with the size controls, and plug whatever you want to make a bunch of into the emitter here. We can do the same thing with the poppers. I'll just take one of these, copy and paste it, plug that into our emitter. Again, just make sure our keyframes start at zero. That'll just help everything. Now look at this. We got little fireworks going on. <laughs> Oh boy, looks like you spent so long on this and you just didn't. That's so dope. Let's just go totally insane here. Let's just make two of these. Boom. Plug the bubbles and the poppers into the same thing. I'll take this emitter and just mess with this random seed a little bit so that these show up in different places and oh baby. Boom. <laughs> So cool. I love quick little techniques like this. They can just elevate your project with very little effort. Speaking of very little effort, make sure to check out the nine nodes you need to make almost anything in Fusion. You can get access to it right here or in the link below. And then also watch this video that YouTube is pretty sure you should watch because I agree. I agree with the YouTube overlords. Everything is okay and I'm here of my own will. I haven't been locked here making tutorials. Everything's, everything's okay.